Hi everyone. Today we're going to do a video that's probably long overdue. What I'm going to do, I'm going to compare the two methods of steering. We're going to be having a look at feeding the wheel and crossing the hands and see whether the driving myths about either of them are correct. So first of all, I'm going to explain the two different methods. You probably understand them yourself, but we're going to go through in a little detail what each of them actually involve and what goes on. So I'm just going to go and get driving. Um, the pull-push technique isn't something that you have to do on your driving test. This is a driving test myth that if you cross your hands, you fail. I know I've said that before in other videos, but I still do recommend it and there's nothing um, that I've found that's going to change my mind on this. So I'll always be talking to my pupils and teaching my pupils to do the pull push. I'm going to have a little look at this as I do this junction. Simply the pull push is whenever you're starting to steer you should reach with the hand to the direction you're going to go. So I'm pulling around to the left. And then what I'm going to do when I'm turning right is reach with this opposite hand. So I need to reach to the right to do the straightening. And then I'll reach to the right again to start pulling down. And your hands slide around the wheel. Okay, easy enough. People do get that wrong and feel as though they've got problems with it because the technique generally isn't good enough. I'm going to go into a little more detail shortly with this, but we're just going to explain with this next couple of roundabouts, or these next couple of roundabouts that I'm going to do, the hand over hand technique. Now, it is something that I can do, but honestly, it's not something that, that I practice, so this might look a little bit um, disjointed, if you like. So the hand over hand is where one grabs over the top for it. And then you can grab over the top this way. Now, you can see there's probably excess hand movement to actually what is required there. And that's really big thing about the crossing of the hands method that it should only be used in slow conditions or when you're driving really slowly when you are maneuvering the hand over hand technique isn't ever going to be something that you're going to be using just driving as I'm doing now down this type of road because you don't require that much steering the amount of steering that you actually need for this is negligible so they're the two techniques what I'm going to do now I'm just going to nip to a car park and we're going to have a little look at how quickly each of these techniques can turn the wheel because that is an argument that I hear all the time that sliding your hands or feeding the wheel or the pull push technique is too slow. Let's go and have a look. So what we've got in front of us are a few grassed areas. What I'm going to do, I'm going to use the one that's in front of us to the right and the further one across, and I'm going to do a figure of eight. First of all, I'm going to have a little go at crossing my hands while I'm doing this, and then I'll transfer over to the pull push and see whether the pull push can actually keep up. I'm going to take speed out of the equation, and simply by keeping the car at idle speed in first gear, we're going to make certain that the speed's regular, so I'm not favouring one or the other just have to be careful of this dog walker to the left. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, just to be safe for him, I'm going to use the middle two. So this one and the next one. Yeah, we're all good. No one else is about. So idle speed, and I'm going to do a figure of eight. So crossing of the hands should also be done nice and smoothly. Yeah, no issues there. Got around quite comfortably. It's a fair bit to do here to go from full lock one way to full lock the other. Yeah can cope with that. Straightening up a little bit and crossing again. So as we can see we can easily get around crossing hands and it doesn't seem to panic at all. And again 
the idle speed is that consistent. Now let's have a little look at pull push. Let's see whether I can do it comfortably pull push. And the answer is obviously yes. My pull push technique should be pretty good. But as you can see, it's still capable of coming around tight corners and you can manoeuvre quite comfortably. So my technique should be, as I've said, pretty good. But it's this that often lets people down. The technique isn't brilliant when they're doing this pull push. Um, and it doesn't allow them to do it as smoothly and as controlled as I've just demonstrated and I've just shown. What people often do is when they're doing the pull push technique, they don't actually slide. I often hear this instead of this. Your hands should be as loose as possible. And people always think that they've got a grip with two hands. You haven't, and that's where it goes wrong. So I'll just give you a little demonstration of what I mean about this padding. People do it in this way. And as you can see, even compared to what I've just done there, it's totally different. So technique often lets people down. So is the pull push technique too slow? Well, if your technique's good enough, no it's not. But I can also still understand why some people think it's too slow. And that's simply because they go too fast. If you go too quickly, in towards a junction you need that harsher quicker steering so for me i'll always try and get people to use this pull push technique because it sort of holds the reins back on people when people do pass their test i even see videos on youtube it's the one of the first things that you should do when you pass your test is abandon this pull push well i disagree and i disagree strongly what people um, tend then to do is come into things too quick and then they scramble for the steering and then that causes a higher risk. I also think that there's a big part to it when people don't anticipate and look at junctions properly. If that happens, if you think, if they arrive at the junction and they haven't worked out the risk, the dangers, how sharp it is, and then it's suddenly sharper than they, they thought, what's gonna happen with the steering? Well, it's gonna be a bit scrambled and that's when they're gonna go over to this crossing of the hands. Now, I'm not saying that crossing of the hands isn't quicker. I think it is. And I'm just gonna do a little demonstration of this now. Let's just get our car started again. What I'm going to do to try and show this, I'm going to try and steer from full lock one way to full lock the other as quickly as I can. See how long it takes me. So let's get to full right lock and I'm going to try and get to full left lock as quickly as I can. Now that was quite hard work and technique has to be really good. But let's have a little go to full right lock now, crossing my hands, and let's see how long that takes. Now I think that was a little quicker. However, both of those scenarios shouldn't really happen. You shouldn't ever put yourself in that situation where you're having to scramble with the steering like I've just shown. What about the argument that people give about the problems with crossing hands? Now, I always hear that if you cross your hands and you had an accident, if the airbag deploys, you're gonna cause problems and injury to your forearms. Well, I'll go on to that in a little second, but. I've had to do a fair bit of research to actually find out about this. I always thought that it was an absolute load of rubbish, but I thought I'd better check it out rather than it just being my opinion on what I feel. 
I thought I'd better do a little bit of research and I have and I've watched a few videos on how airbags deploy um, and to be honest it surprises me a little and you can maybe even see what I'm going to talk about here there's a little crease in the airbag this is the airbag area obviously and when they deploy this area splits and peels back and it's very loose material and it has to be so the airbag can actually deploy so is there anything that's going to shoot out and then injure your forearms well i don't think so um, airbags they are an explosion but they they deploy at such a high speed that they're probably going to be even out and deployed before you even move yourself they are that fast so there's nothing that comes from this area this folds away and then the airbag deploys and this is something that i actually found out as well is that they're not solid they have vents in the back of them now i would really thought about it to be honest i've never had an accident where the airbags have deployed but there's going to be nothing that's going to injure you when your hands would be over here so i can't find anything that can substantiate that claim that crossing your hands is going to injure your arms if you're at a speed where the airbag's going to deploy you're probably not going to be crossing your hands anyway as i mentioned a little touch earlier um, and if you think about it as well if your hands are in this position doing the pull push and you saw an accident coming are you likely to tense up and brace well if that's the case your hands and wrists are going to absorb all of the impact i did have a crash many uh, years ago actually on the lesson where someone on the left lane of a roundabout just went across and tried to turn right and my pupil hit the side of the car um, and I took all the impact because I'd got to the brake and the clutch pedal I took all the impact through my left hip and my left hip even today I still feel pain through it so if you think about what we're saying that would you rather have an impact all on your wrists and through your hands and cause your wrist and maybe shoulder or even neck problems rather than having your hands here well that's still not really conclusive but i hope you understand the point there's also another part as well that i think us brits um, are, are really causing um, more of this argument than's than, than is needed if you think um, cars even like this bmw they're sold all around the world and not every country adopts the pull push technique i know in the united states that the crossing of the hands is the the main thing that that they want to see from from people driving so honestly wouldn't car manufacturers if there were any injuries potentially with crossing your hands if airbags deployed don't you think there would be some advice in the manuals and if there were injuries created by crossing your hands don't you think that car manufacturers would be inundated with lawsuits all the time so for me logic states that it doesn't really make sense there are other things which actually make the pull push a little bit better in my opinion and one of the things is the use of these controls these controls um, here outside of the steering wheel are there for a reason now if you're crossing your hands when are you going to be able to operate these things so if i was coming off at this roundabout now my left hand's free just to put it down but what if i'm crossing like this how am i going to left signal to come off So as you can see there are benefits to the pull push are there any downsides to crossing hands well i've already mentioned that it could then 
start introducing some bad habits into your own driving. Um, if you're having to cross your hands, as I've proved in the car park, it's probably because you're going too fast, because I've proved with the figure of eight, sorry, that beeping is just saying it's cold out, that's all. Um, I've proved with the figure of eight that I've done that the pull push um, can cope with it. So have we proved that the crossing of the hands is a little quicker? Maybe. It felt a little quicker, to be honest, when I was in the car park. Uh, but, it, but it's negligible. There's not much in it. But I think what I've been able to show is that there's no obvious reason that you have to do it. But is it a problem if you do? I don't honestly think that it is an issue. I don't think it's a problem. I think that what I found out regarding the airbags splitting and deploying, I don't think there's any more risk of injury crossing your hands um, other than having your hands on the wheel. In fact, for me, um, I would be mindful if I was ever in that situation not to grab the wheel too tight because you probably will end up with some more injuries. Your seat belt anyway is going to hold you in that position and really airbags, what they're there to do is to supplement the seat belt. The seat belt's the main safety device on your car and if you're um, in an accident, don't forget which the airbags are going to deploy. It's going to be a pretty, uh, a pretty serious one I would have thought. I know they can go off just at lower speeds as well, I, I do understand that, but generally it's going to be a higher speed impact. So all in all, I don't think it is an issue crossing your hands um, regarding the airbag, but hopefully I've stated a few cases why the pull-push technique um, should maybe still be try to be implemented. If you do have problems with that pull-push technique, just go back to what I was saying about the padding of the hands and try and get used to that slide sound rather than uh, on and off all the time. Now, I hope that helps. If there's anything that you'd like to ask in the comments, please do. And uh, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you soon.